Hello everyone, this is Bridget with Horse Auctions USA and I thought we would uh, take a few minutes to kind of go over the online bidding that's happening this Sunday at Storm Horse Sale in Colfax, Iowa. Um, I know they've had online bidding in the past but um, Horse Auctions USA is new to Storm Horse Auction um, so it's going to be a new platform for um, their longtime bidders and sometimes it's a little bit easier to navigate things if you can see them in action so that's what I'm going to do uh, with you today. I really wanted to do this live, but I'm doing this from my home, and I have four small furry wireless doorbells running around that will absolutely bark at some point, um, so we're going to pre-record this so we can edit <laughs> when we need to. Um, so first things first is how to get to the online bidding site. <clears throat> I'm going to open up the Facebook page here for a minute. So on the Storm Horse Auction Facebook page, and fun note guys, um, Please make sure that you're always on the new Storm Horse Auction page. Um, the previous page uh, was lost due to a hack. Um, so I know a lot of people um, will, you know, just, just out of habit go to the old page. So make sure you're on the new page. And you'll see uh, Teresa has been diligently posting the horses for Sunday's sale. You'll see under each of the horses their individual online bidding links. I will try to keep these updated right through Friday. Once Friday comes, the odds of me being able to slap individual links under the Facebook posts are pretty slim, so don't be counting on that. Um, but for now, you can navigate to the online catalog from any of the links. Um, the link itself is going to take you directly to the horse you're looking at, but then you can always back up to go to the rest of it. But we'll show you how to get there otherwise. So there's two ways to use Horse Auctions USA. And the first of those is our app. So if you're planning on bidding online and you're planning on using your cell phone, your tablet, any mobile device, I would encourage you to use the app. Um, it's free to download. It's available on both the Google Play and the app stores for your iPhones. Um, most of my users who have it really like it. It's super user friendly. Um, it just fits your phone and your mobile devices really well because it's formatted to, to look correct on those. Um, notifications come right to your phone, all that good stuff. Um, so again, free to download. It's the Horse Auctions USA app. You'll just type in the search bar in whatever store is applicable for your phone, Horse Auctions with an S USA, and the icon is going to pop right up. For the rest of you, if you don't want to use the app or you absolutely are going to be on a computer, you are going to want to use your browser. This will work in any browser, but I like Google Chrome because it's the most up-to-date browser. But again, you can use whatever browser you're most comfortable with. And you are going to type bid, B-I-D, dot horse auctions with an S, U-S-A dot com. That's going to bring you here. This is our bidding site and this is the home page. And if you get there today or tomorrow or Saturday, you're going to see, you don't see a storm horse auction up here, do you? Because we've got a bunch of sales this weekend, guys. We've got them all over the country. So, this homepage shows you all the sales we've got coming up. So, Storm Horse Auction is right here. They go in order by day and time. Um, so, we've actually got four sales that are going to run prior to Storm Horse Auction on Sunday. So, this is Storm Horse Auction. So, you will just click View Auction right here. And that is going to bring up the main landing page for Storm Horse Auction. Over here is the basic information about the sale itself. Um, it also has some information about the online bidding. So that's over here. That's the main auction listing. And then over here on this side is an index, if you will, of the horses and the Verlin Potts benefit items because those are going to be available for online bidding also. So here, as you just scroll down, you'll see an index of them. Um, what you're going to notice while I'm doing this now and probably when you visit the site for the next day or two is that these are huge numbers, big 1,000 and 2,000 numbers. So when we put these animals on, often um, the final lot numbers are not assigned by the auction company yet. Um, but we want to go ahead and get these animals on so you guys can see them. So we put them on with these big numbers as placeholders. So right now, everything is in random order with a ghost number. This number is going to go away. TS Trace Red Hawk is not going to be number 10,011 or, one, or 1,011, sorry. Um, we will update those as we know. Now, I do know, for example, that this I'm Irresistibly Hot Horse is going to be the number one horse. So he's already been updated. So as these get updated with their proper hip numbers, it will reflect over here. Okay, so that's number one. By sale day, they'll be in correct order and they will have the correct numbers. 
I do want to draw your attention to this very first lot, and this, no matter what, is going to stay up here at the top. This is lot zero, the practice bidding lot and sale information. If you click on that, it's going to bring up, again, all of the auction information, and it's going to give you some real useful stuff about the online bidding. The other thing it's going to allow you to do is to place some practice bids that we're going to go over in a minute. Um, so I really like this. This is kind of the make all your mistakes, get it out of your system lot over here. You can't do anything to hurt yourself over here on the zero lot. So um, we're going to come back to that. And then I did for this particular auction, I did build another lot down here just to tell you about the benefit that um, the Storm family is uh, putting on in conjunction with the auction. Um, it's a really great cause. Um, it's going to tell you kind of all about what's going on. Um, really great items, stud fees, um, trips, all kinds of things. Um, and all of that will be available for the online bidding. So if you're going to participate in online bidding, the very first thing you have to do is register. So you'll see under every single lot it says register to bid. And it doesn't matter which lot you click under, as long as you are in the auction you want to register for, you can click under any lot your heart desires. So you're going to click register to bid. And it's going to bring up this screen. Now, the first thing that a lot of people do is they just automatically go to putting their email address in here. Guys, if you've never used Horse Auctions USA, you don't want to do that because then you're going to get an error saying, hey, we don't have you in the system. So if you're new to us, you're going to go down here to no account, sign up here. And you're going to click that. And then you're going to put all your information in. I like to check receive bidding notifications by email. Um, and the reason I say you check that is if you use our absentee bidding, which I'm going to go over in a minute. Um, if you get outbid, it's going to send you a notification like, hey, you're outbid. Um, same thing if you're live, if you placed a bid ahead of time and we're live and you got caught up cooking supper or whatever and you get outbid and we're live, it's going to send you a notification, hey, you got outbid. Um, so kind of a good thing to have. So you're going to complete this. <clears throat> it is going to ask you to enter a valid debit or a credit card. And you do need to do that step in order to complete registration. Now, this is very, very important. We do not charge your card to register to bid, okay? We would never do such a thing. However, we do run a pre-authorization for $500 on your registered card because we need to make sure that our bidders are real people over the age of 18 with a valid payment method. I hate that we have to do that, but this is the world that we live in. So that's going to happen. Most mobile banking apps, when that does happen, they're going to send you a notification. And nine times out of ten, that notification looks like a charge. And that usually prompts a call to me asking why we charged your card. So just know when you get that little notification from your bank, it is not, I repeat, not a charge. Okay, guys? It is, um, that's just the way the mobile banking apps handle that. If you actually get into your mobile banking, you'll see the charge sitting there as pending, if you see it at all. Some some apps won't even show it. Um, and then it's going to disappear like it was never there, like it's just going to fall off. It does that automatically on my end at the completion of the sale on Sunday. When it reflects on your end, it's going to be very dependent on your bank. Most banks, it'll fall off by Monday. Some, it'll be Tuesday. But the point is, we're not charging you to bid. The other part of that is you do not have to pay for your winning bids with that card. All right, my system does not integrate with Storm System. You're going to have to make payment directly to the auction company. You can pay um, with whatever payment method you normally would use up there. Cash or check at pickup, as long as you're picking up within 24 hours of the auction end, all that good stuff. Um, and of course, you can use your card. Um, you'll just have to give that information to the office staff at Storms. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. I actually made a bidder account so I can do this with you guys. So let me get into that one. So oh, remember me on this device. Um, did you see that there? Do click that. The reason I say to click that is you see how now that I am signed in and I am registered, my name is up here. So that's your first clue that you are in fact logged in. The second clue is that my little prompts to register to bid now say bid. Um, so those two things tell me that I am registered for the auction that I am in and I'm logged in. And the reason that I'm harping on this is I have had people in the past not have, um, not select to have it save their login details. And there's one horse and that's the horse that they want to bid on and they're going to bid live. And they wait and they're all excited and they're ready and we go live. And that horse comes in the ring and they are not logged in. And if you're not logged in, you can't bid. And again, it's a live auction. Things move at a pretty quick pace. So if you're not logged in and you have to scramble to log in and get back to the live feed, there's a very good chance you're going to miss out on your horse. So again, good practice. As soon as you open the app or go to the website, make sure that you are logged in. Your name's up here. And if it's an auction that you have, in fact, already registered for, it's asking you if you want to bid. So 
let's talk about navigating this catalog and making some choices, okay, like what you can do. So as you go through these, you see how some of them say video? If these horses have a video, it will be in the online catalog and it will always be the second thumbnail. So first thumbnail, here's the second one. I'm going to click it. Oh, brings up the video. It'll play right there for you. So if they have a video, it's going to play in the second thumbnail and it's going to tell you up here that they have a video and then their expanded information will be down here as well. So that's applicable to all lots. Um, if it doesn't say video, there isn't one. Um, there are some horses on Facebook that have very brief like two, three, four second videos. Many of those videos are not on here just because it's a, a lot to go through for YouTube like for a three or four second video. So, um, But otherwise, if, if they have any kind of length to them at all, they will be included here. Um, so you've shopped these horses, you like the ones that you've, that you've picked out, and maybe you're ready to do a little bit of bidding, and how are you going to do that? So what's open right now is the early absentee bidding. That's why these are asking you if you want to bid. Here's where this practice lot's going to come in handy for you guys. So let's just say that on Sunday you have a family obligation that's going to prevent you from watching live. Or maybe you work weekends and you have to work Sunday and your boss isn't real keen on you buying horses while you're working. Maybe, like most of us, you live out in the country and rural internet is not all that it's cracked up to be sometimes. In all of those cases, you might want to think about this option that we're going to go over right now and here's why. This live feed is no delay on my end, okay? So from, from the auction going out, there's no delay. However, there is absolutely nothing I can do to help things on your end. So if you live in an area with really bad service, or you're going to be on your cell phone and in questionable service, that could be a problem. Um, because if there's a lag on your end, your bid might not get in and you may very well miss out bidding live. Um, the other time that I'm going to recommend using this is if you are a person who finds big decisions under pressure really daunting, maybe this is a better option for you. Um, horse auctions, again, are fast-paced and purchasing a horse is usually a pretty big deal for most people. And they think they're ready and then we get into the live auction and the auctioneer is going pretty fast and they freeze. And you know you better than anyone. If that sounds like it might, you know, pertain to you, maybe again, this is going to be a good option. So how does this work? We're going to use the practice lot. Two ways. You can opt to bid what it's asking for, right? And just wait until you're um, outbid and come back and bid again. I mean, that works fine right up until we go live. But once we go live, that's going to force you into a live bidding scenario. The other option, I, mean, I am going to place a bid here just so you guys can see what, ha what happens. The other option, though, is the one where you would create a maximum bid. So if you're just going to place a bid, whether we're live or you want to do this as you go, you're going to click bid. I have not bid yet. Okay, I clicked it once. You see how it says confirm bid? We're going to click that again. This is to prevent an accidental bidding. We do not want such things. No bueno. So you click it twice. Now, now I have placed that bid for $12.50 and I am officially the high bidder. So that is how that works. But the thing that will help you if you need to place bids ahead of time and let the computer do the work for you is to use this little drop down arrow over here. So if you click this, you see how it says create a max bid, let the system bid for you? That's the thing I'm talking about. This works a lot like eBay if you ever used eBay. This lets the computer do all the work. So I am going to make a maximum bid on this practice lot of $2,000 and I'm going to go ahead and place that bid. See how it didn't change this because I was already the high bidder here? The computer's job is to get the horse for you for the lowest possible amount. So it's bidding on your behalf. So it's not going to go ahead and put me in at $2,000. That's not in my best interest. I'm already the winning bidder at $1,250. The computer's just made a note of that. So if Susie comes along and she bids $1,500, the computer's going to see that $1,500 and say, okay, I accept your $1,500 bid, but you have been outbid. And it's going to put me back in. And it's going to tell Susie, I'm sorry, you've been outbid. You have to bid again. And so on. So the computer's not just going to automatically throw you in there for your maximum bid. If you put a $10,000 maximum bid in there, the computer isn't going to say, okay, we're off to the races and set you in for $10,000. It doesn't work like that. Its job is to bid like it's you. 
So that's the way that works. When we go live sale day, I will be running this computer at the auction. And when the floor bids, I'm going to be entering those floor bids in real time. And the computer is then going to come back with its answer. You know, it's going to represent your bid and, and put you back in. If you get outbid, it's going to tell you. Same deal if you've placed an absentee bid. You can still watch live. I have a lot of people who do that. Um, they place their bid, their maximum bid, and then they still get logged in and watch live. And if, God forbid, they get outbid during the live bidding, they can jump in and go to live bidding. So you can. You can jump in and go live. You can jump in and up your maximum if it looks like it's going to go over it. You can do all of those things. A key point I do want to talk about on the absentee bidding. Let's just say you place an absentee bid. And then that horse comes in and the owner says, by the way, this horse cribs. That wasn't in these footnotes here. Or that horse comes in and is visibly lame. Anything happens that uh, when the horse comes in, changes the information you had here. I, I can always see that someone has placed a bit ahead of time. I can knock it out on my end. And I'm going to knock it out on my end. Because when an announcement is made or an observation is made that changes the information you had when you bid, um, that's a game changer and that's not fair. And that's new information that people who are bidding live have and you didn't have when you bid. So I'm going to knock your bid out of there. If I can see that you're on live, I'm going to say to you, hey, Julie, I'm going to repeat the announcement. Um, I see you're on here live. I, I want you to know that's why I took your bid out of there. But in all cases, I'm going to take your bid out completely out of the system. That's for your protection. So that is absentee bidding. Live bidding. When we go live, you see this little view live icon here? You're going to make sure you're logged in, all that good stuff. You're going to click on that first slot, that practice slot, and you're going to click view live. We're not live right now. So if we're not live yet, it's going to tell you this, okay? We're not currently active. When we're live, you're going to have real-time audio and video. And those bid buttons that you see, those bid buttons are going to change. Okay, they're going to change as the auctioneer. So he goes, if he goes 1,000, 1,250, 1,500, 1,700, 2,000, it's going to change. And it's going to have the ask right here. So if he's asking for 2,500, this is going to say bid 2,500, all right? Um, I know some people have a hard time following the auctioneer. If you can't quite make out what he is saying, don't worry about it. You worry about the number. I'll be keeping up with him on my end. Okay. So that's um, the basics of how this works. Um, something else I do like to show people when you're navigating this um, is the search bars. So you can search on the computer. You've got this little search up here. And then on your, um, on your phones, you have this little search glass down here. So you can search by keywords. So if you are looking for a blue roan and only a blue roan, you can do that and anything that brings up a blue roan is going to pop up. Now if they didn't use blue roan in their written description, it may not. Um, so that might not always work. Um, but at least, um, you know, you can kind of narrow things down. So that is something I, I tend to forget to tell people. So just wanted to let you know. So there's the ins and outs, the basics, all that good stuff. We will be live on Facebook too on Sunday. Um, please note, you cannot bid on Facebook. Um, it's just there for people who want to view. You can also just watch on Horse Auctions USA without having an account. You do not have to have an account with Horse Auctions USA in order to watch. Anybody and everybody can watch the feed. Um, so if all you want to do is watch, you have no interest in buying a horse, you're welcome to do that. If you are watching on Facebook or you're watching on YouTube, do be advised that they, both of those avenues buffer the feed. So there will be a little bit of a delay in their feed. Um, so if you have, some people like to watch it on two devices, this feed over here on Horse Auctions USA is going to be right um, in real time with no delay, Facebook, YouTube, they buffer. So there's going to be a 15 to 20 second delay on those platforms. So just be aware of that. I would encourage you to register before we start the auction. And that way, if you have problems, I can walk you through. Once we start the auction, I'm actually on the auction block running the online bidding. And it's kind of hard to answer the phone. Um, so again, my name is Bridget. My number is 336-904-8903 if you have any online bidding questions. I do have two other auctions this weekend on Friday and Saturday, so I might be a little difficult to reach during those times. If you call and I don't answer, please, by all means, send me a text. I will return that text just as soon as I can. Um, if I get off the auction block at a really um, crazy hour, it will be the next morning at a reasonable hour. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this helpful, and uh, you can keep checking back for updates. I've got lots more horses to add and all that good stuff stuff. We'll see you Sunday.